This very old pass, which dates back to 1880, is actually exceptionally well designed with fairly easy gradients. It's been realigned and changed over the last 120 years and has the stamp of Mr. T. W. Bain on the first map plot. At 6,6 kilometers, it's not that long, but due to the slow speeds necessary, it takes a fair bit of time to complete the pass. Part of the allure of driving this pass is the not inconsiderable challenge of navigating your way back to any main road from the foot of the pass. The pass displays a substantial altitude variance of 480 meters and produces a stiff average gradient of just under 1 in 14. Whilst a 4x4 is not necessary to drive the pass, we strongly suggest a vehicle with good ground clearance, otherwise your vehicle will be likely to sustain some damage. From the start at the closed farm gate and cattle grid, at the Père de Kral farm, the road bends very sharply to the left through 90 degrees. If you've not yet deflated your tyres, do so now. Take them down to between 1.2 and 1.4 bar. If your vehicle is equipped with low range, engage low range as it will give you good braking control and allow for more precise driving. After the second left hand bend, the road levels right off and this is an excellent spot to switch off your vehicle and take some photos of the extraordinary high altitude view of the mountains dropping down to the massive dun coloured plain known as Dicknarsflakte. This enormous quartz covered plain is home to a phenomenal variety of tiny succulents which make their appearance briefly each spring. Once you've had your fill of the beautiful views, it's back on the road again where the next bend is a fairly sharp right-hander. Here the careful observer will note the stone supporting walls along this small section, strongly reminiscent of Thomas Bain's work. There are several farm gates to open and close on this route, make sure that you leave them in the state that you find them. The direction now gradually changes into the southwest, and the track can be seen for a long way ahead of you as it heads in a straight line down a ridge of the mountain. This long straight section lasts for 700 meters and allows excellent views ahead and especially to the right. Once you reach the foot of the pass and you're on the plains, keep a lookout for antelope and especially for springbuck. On the day of filming we saw the standard colored ones but there were also white as well as black springbuck. We issue a cautionary for this pass. The distances are big and the terrain is rough and desolate with very low traffic volumes. Your navigation needs to be spot on. Make sure you have plenty of fuel and appropriate equipment to repair punctures and deal with roadside emergencies. If you find the exit route navigation too tricky, rather turn around at the foot of the pass and retrace your route back to Nivotville. At the 1.2 km mark there's an easy bend to the left as the track avoids a sharp rocky outcrop. This signals what is probably the trickiest part of the pass as the road begins a series of very sharp and steep turns. The first one is an S-bend which leads straight into a horseshoe bend of 180 degrees. The road is quite rough along the section so take care where you place the wheels and choose your driving lines carefully making sure to avoid the many sharp rocks on the sides of the road. Along this switchback section, the views are impressive, as with every change in direction, a new vista presents itself. The nearby town of Nivotville is known for its unique vegetation, with the biggest variety of indigenous bulbous plants in the world, and the 100 meter high Nivotville Falls on the Durang River. It's a small town, its warm sandstone buildings shelter in a well-treed hollow in a flat landscape covered by wheat, heather and proteas. Just to the northwest of the town, the 5,575 hectare Urlochskloof Nature Reserve is one of South Africa's most unique reserves. It's characterized by deep ravines, cliffs, caves and rock art, and a diverse mix of flora and fauna characteristic of four different biomes. The reserve is well known for its challenging hiking trails, including two four-day 50-kilometer trails. In addition to its topographical offerings, the reserve boasts an abundance of flora and fauna, including several very rare bird species such as the black stork and the black eagle. The reserve, as well as this pass, are part of the Bockefeld mountain range, the northernmost part of the Cape Cedarberg. Be sure to watch part 2 of this historical pass, which covers the lower half of the descent. Mm -hmm.